this is the overview of the construction of the uh, control board for the Scotty Spectrum Analyzer project. This board uh, connects up to the parallel port DB25 connector on a standard computer. It consists of four uh, latches which um, buffer and uh, uh, redistribute the uh, signals, the corresponding uh, modules. This is the only board that doesn't require its own PC board, PCB board to be made. Um, I'm using just a standard perf board from Radio Shack. Um, you do want to use uh, sockets for the uh, 74, uh, 573 latches. The wiring can be done using a bus wire, tinned bus wire, and just uh, solder blobs in between the uh, connections you need to make. Um, the spacing on the perf board allows you to use uh, surface mount components. So you can see these pull down resistors. Here's the schematic. Um, you see the pull down resistors and a uh, 100 picofarad uh, caps on the latch enables. I'm still using the uh, surface mount components for those and the uh, 0.01 microfarad on the VCC lines just to, you know, tame any EMI. Everything else can basically be uh, leaded components. I'm also using uh, SIP sockets on the outputs. I'm not using them as sockets normally, but what I do is I, uh, I fill the little cups with solder. You can stick the wire into the cup and then just kind of hit it with your soldering iron. This gives you a mechanically solid connection. You don't have to worry about the uh, bubble coming loose and you can just uh, hit the tip of your soldering iron if you ever want to remove the wire. Um, there's eight data lines on the parallel port. It has series of 1K resistors. This is just a swamp and you know, reflections that are in the the cable. These, these cables can be quite long and you just kind of want to knock down any um, reflections. And then there's a, each line has its own 100 picofarad capacitor just to further reduce any noise interference. There's also a, the board has its own uh, 70 L05 voltage regulator and I have uh, just a standard setup with uh, two 10 microfarad caps on the input and the output. Directly on the Oh, you need to use a DB25 uh, female connection for the uh, control board and use the mail on, to the computer. I added ferrite beads to each of the control lines, except for the grounds. Don't, don't use a ferrite bead on the ground wire. Uh, pins 25 through 18 should be all tied together. Scotty's uh, original design he used several pull-up resistors. I recommend adding these, but I'm going to add them into the modules as they require it. Also, um, be careful on the labels on some of these. There's two select. There's actually a select and a select printer. Those are actually two different signals, so make sure you don't confuse those. You can test the board going to setup special tests, LPT port test, capture status. See these ones? These are the uh, basically the status lines. Um, going into the uh, into the uh, uh, parallel port here. And since um, there's nothing connected right now, this should all be one and everything else should be a zero essentially. I did run into one little quirk here. On these uh, latch enables, like uh, pin 17, you just click the one, it changes it to one. My uh, latch, I'm not sure if you can see that. On the meter, my latch enable line, they're only 3.4 volts. That should be around 5 volts, but that's that's coming directly from the parallel port. So that is something to look out for. Like a long um, parallel cable could, uh, you know, 
pick up noise or something that could uh, affect your uh, performance. Um, everything else uh, tested out fine. You can, with this test software, you can select ones and zeros for uh, each of the lines. Your D0 through your D7 are the actual data lines coming in to the latches. And these uh, pin 1, pin 14, pin 16, pin 17 are the latch enables. The latches are enabled when high. Um, or the latch enable outputs are enabled when the latch enable is high. The latches essentially um, are just pass through. If there's a 1 on the input, there'll be a 1 on the output. Um, you want to use a star type configuration when you use the wires. You can see where you have all these sockets uh, are all tied to the. This will be your P1D0. This will be the clock signal for the lo local oscillators and the DDS. You want it all going back to the same um, solder connection like that. That just uh, helps minimize uh, interference. It also helps if the wires going to each of the, the clock lines are the same length. It will also help in any reflections. Uh, affecting the signal. Um, there's four latches, P1, P2, P3, P4. The outputs are labeled P1, D0, P1, D7, P2, D0, P2, D7, P3, D0, P3, D7, P4, D0, P4, D7. You want to he has a wiring diagram. The uh, P1D0 signal essentially gets turned into the uh, connected to the uh, clock on your local os first local oscillator. The uh, clock on the DDS module, and then it's also to the second local oscillator. As you can see, how they um, the uh, they have more meaningful names as the uh, the uh, outputs. And get into the uh, individual modules themselves. That's just something you want to keep uh, tr uh, track of. So you don't go. It can, the way he has it labeled, it can be kind of confusing, but it, uh, it makes sense when you kind of look at everything ahead of time. Again, um, those inputs coming from the uh, parallel port, they are in parallel to each of the uh, inputs on the four latches. Um, the only change from his Scotty's original schematic, like I said, was I just added some ferrite beads. Those are actually pretty, probably optional. That's nothing to really worry about. Um, these 10K resistors normally pull the line low, and you just uh, highs on these lines, enable the latches.